make up your mind you're going to stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out, and then the next breath, and then the next. Now there will be other thoughts coming into the mind, but you don't have to pay them any attention. One of our problems is we find our thoughts too interesting. It's good to get out of them for a while. Then there are going to be noises outside, there are going to be other disturbances. And you can make a lot out of those disturbances, out of those obstacles. There's a saying in Thai that if you want to develop goodness, the goodness is not going to come unless you meet up with obstacles. So you have to take the obstacles in stride. And in most cases, the obstacles don't make things impossible for us, it's just they make things difficult. And so we looked at, have to look into our own minds to see, well, why are we not up for the difficulties? We may not see the value of doing whatever we're doing, which is one thing. We may just be lazy. Sometimes it's an old habit we have. Like if you're trying to observe the precepts, someone comes up to you and asks you a question about something you'd like to hide, or something that you know if you told them the truth it wouldn't please them. So you change the, what you're going to say, we end up breaking the precept to please the other people. So you have to realize, okay, the obstacle is not the other person. The obstacle is your desire to please the other person right then. You have to figure out some other way of saying the truth and putting it in a way that's not going to be upsetting, if possible. And other times, if it's going to be upsetting, you have to put up with the fact that the truth is upsetting sometimes. So you learn how not to take the obstacles as a major problem. At least not the obstacles outside. You have to look at the problem inside your own mind. Because we all have some old habits that are not really good for the practice. We have to have the attitude that we have to choose between the practice and our old habits. We've got to choose the practice, because the practice is designed for our true happiness. And the Buddha recommends that you be generous and virtuous, that you meditate. And part of your mind says, no, I'd rather hold on to my things and not share them. Or I'd like to break a few precepts. Or I don't have time to meditate. Or my mind is a mess, how can I meditate? Okay, those attitudes are, your, are the real obstacles there. And then, of course, you're going to go out and try to find obstacles outside to excuse your inside obstacles. You're not really focusing on where the real problem is. So remember, the real problem is inside. In the Pali Canon, they had the personification of evil as Mara. He tries and comes to get in the way of the Buddha. And the Buddha keeps reminding Mara that the only reason Mara would be able to have some power over him is if inside his own mind he gave in to his defilements. When you don't give in to your defilements, then outside temptations, outside obstacles don't have any power over your mind. So keep remembering to look inside, that the real obstacles are here, not out there. And if you fall for the obstacles, okay, you've harmed yourself, even though you may identify with them very strongly. As I said, you, our attitudes are, this is my way of doing things, this is the person, type of person I am, or just plain old laziness. We can't identify with those. If we do, then they drag us down. We have our choice. We can identify with the better sides of our minds, the part of the mind that's wiser, that looks for long-term happiness rather than the short-term satisfaction. So when you meet up with an obstacle, you have to ask yourself, okay, what can I do so that I'm not on the side of the obstacle, that I don't let it have power over me? And realize that it's the inside obstacles. Those are the things you really got to watch out for. But you do have the ability to overcome them. The Buddha and all of his noble disciples have shown that this is something that human beings can do. And it wasn't the case that they were superhuman when they were born. They were born with all the same defilements we have. Simply that their attitude was they really wanted to find true happiness, a happiness that doesn't change, a happiness that doesn't disappoint. So they didn't let minor happinesses, the minor pleasures, get in the way. And sometimes it's not necessarily evil that tempts us, it's just minor pleasures that get in the way of the larger well-being. So watch out for those. And as for outside difficulties, learn how not to make them have inroads in your mind. Don't make sure that you don't have a fifth column inside your own mind that sides with them. And that way they don't have any power over you at all. You can still do the goodness you want to do. It's a real shame in our society we don't talk about goodness that much. A couple of years back I got online and went to Amazon and typed goodness into the search box. And most of the books that came up had to do with how to cook cookies, cakes, pies. The idea of searching for goodness in your own life, that was seemed to be very foreign. But it's something that really is for our true best interest if we decide that I want to make goodness and the accomplishment of my life in my thoughts, in my words, in my deeds. And don't let minor pleasures get in the way.